Okay, I'm going to make eggplant parm, and the first thing to do is cut the eggplant. First, I want to talk about the eggplant because Julia Child always said that you can tell the males from the females by looking at how much depression there was. This one doesn't have much, and hopefully that means fewer seeds. In this case, we've had food delivery, so I don't get to pick them out anyway, so it's a moot point, but we would love to not have too many seeds. I'm going to slice it thin. And thin is good for maximizing the, I'm overdoing it here, that's too thin. About an eighth of an inch. So we maximize the amount of coating. And there are some seeds in here, but that's fine. What I've got in my two plates is flour on one side and some egg on the other. I lightly beat the egg and added a few drops of water to extend it. And if you want, you can put a little salt in either one. You don't need to. You can worry about the seasoning at the end. Anyway, I'm going to cut this all. And the thinner you cut it, the more breading you're going to have in your dish. And you, you know, you're going to have a larger quantity. If you want to cut it thick, you'll have less coating. Anyway, with the simple recipe, you're going to bread the eggplant, fry it in olive oil, and then assemble it with some sauce and some cheese, and bake it, and have one of the most delicious vegetarian dishes that you could possibly have. I have more than enough here. It's just going to be for two people, and I'm going to have some leftovers, but stop right there. I'm not going to go through the entire process of each slice, but here basically we're going to flour these and then we're going to dip them in the egg and then we're going to put them back in the flour and get a coating and then I'm going to lay them on the wax paper and the more you do this the more you'll figure out how to keep your hands from getting all filthy and clogged, but there's no way really. It's a messy. So, don't do too many at once. Now the, these are coated with egg, and try to get all that off so you don't waste it, and then put that back in here. And that's basically what it's going to look like, and that's going to go into the olive oil, get fried to a golden brown, and assembled to make your eggplant parm. Let's see, I'm trying not to use my fingers into the egg too much, because once you do, you got to keep washing your hands over and over again. These will be beautiful, and Come back for the next step in a few minutes. So here's what I got out of that eggplant, and um, this is plenty for what I want. I want to make two servings and have two more servings of leftovers, and I could have been more efficient about it. But anyway, uh, also I decided since it's the peak of summer and it's hot. I don't want to fry them. I'm going to bake them, and you can usually bake anything you want to fry. I'm going to put them in the barbecue at 400 or 425, brush them with a little olive oil, and uh, crisp them up that way, and that's going to be just as good as frying, but with less fat and um, less heat, no need to heat up the kitchen. I could fry outside too, but I don't want to be outside. I'm in a pretty surly mood with the pandemic and the wildfires and the, the air is unbreathable, so I'm just going for the easy way out today. But I did promise someone I would make a cooking video or two, so eggplant is just one of our favorite things. And you can see they're ugly, but they're beautiful. I try to make them an eighth of an inch, but again, that's a variable, a variable you can play with. 
Some people can uh, salt and pepper on here if you want. I'm not going to season them. I'm going to keep the seasoning in my sauce. And uh, I like the contrast. But again, there's a million ways to skin this cat. So basically it's going to be cooked eggplant that's been breaded the way I did with flour and then egg and then flour again. Then it's going to be assembled with sauce and cheese and maybe some herbs. Got some parsley and some oregano I'll throw in there for sure. And uh, as much cheese as you want. And again, when you're my age, you try to cut down the saturated fat. So we're going to go for more vegetables and then fewer, you know, of the fun stuff. Carbs and the fats. But it's going to come out great. Promise you that. I'd love to make it for you sometime. We are getting lonely, isn't everyone? Okay, so that's the end of this phase of the video. Okay, you see what I'm trying to do here? I've got these all on the grill, and I'm going to bake them. I've sprayed them liberally with uh, olive oil cooking spray. And I'm trying to keep my temperature somewhere in the 400 degree range, which is hard because I have the door open so much. I've lost the temperature, but it doesn't matter. I just want to make sure not to burn them to a crisp. Obviously, it will get a little more uh, charcoal-y barbecue flavor when you do it this way, but I don't mind that. Got some uh, droppings from the trees above me here. Anyway, this is how we do when we have to because it's too hot to cook indoors. I am not in the mood. Some of these that I put on at the beginning might be ready for turning. I'm going to check. For sure. Well, these are going to be good. Took a while to put them all on, so there's a difference in how long they've been on here. I'm looking for the ones that are the most cooked. I want them to be cooked, but not burnt. Could take a little longer. Don't they look beautiful? And these are going to go in my sauce and back in the barbecue at maybe 300, 350. Bake them in there. And something good will come out. Still cooking a few of these. Alright, give those another minute and then I will take them off, assemble them into a glass dish with the sauce and the cheese and some herbs and put them back in here at 350 or so. And here I have a crispy plate of eggplants slices that have been baked and uh, they have been sprayed with olive oil which gave the breading a nice crispy texture and now I'm going to go assemble them into my casserole and put them back in there to do the final baking which won't take that long maybe 20-25 minutes. Okay I've assembled this into a glass casserole dish you have to be careful with glass in the barbecue not to overcook the bottom, so I'm going to put a few layers underneath it. I'll get my heat down to 400, my temperature down to 350 actually, before I put this in. So that's what I'm going to work on right now, and I'll come back to you in a moment. So I'm going to bake this now, and what I've, I've got actually two cookie sheets under that pan and some aluminum foil, and I've turned off the center row of burners so that I'm not you know, ferociously heating the bottom of the pan. And I've got the other burners on low, and it's 300 now. It'll come up to about 350. It'll bake for 20, 25 minutes. When it's bubbling, we will um, serve it. Maybe a little salad or some pasta on the side. I haven't decided. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, I use sauce out of a jar. I used to make tomato sauce all the time, but... Now we make it about once a year when we harvest our tomatoes and put it in the freezer and then the rest of the time we buy 
jar sauce because if I can get a delicious sauce for five dollars a jar, I'm not going to bother. Anyway, here we go. Come back later. Okay, eggplant parm in the Barbie. Completely cooked in the Barbie to keep our house from heating up. And now we're going to serve it. Shave a little parmesan on that when we get to the table, but basically, this is our barbecued eggplant parmesan. <laughs>